So SEC will be cutting the conflict of interest between the broker dealers and market makers soon, most likely according to this particular rule, you're not going to be able to be the owner of the clearing house and the broker dealer at the same time. Why is this? SEC adopts Dot Frank rule on clearing agency conflict of interest. What this actually means, well, you cannot be the coach and the referee at the same time. The SEC continue its recent run of pushing through remaining regulations under the Dodd-Frank Act created in 2010 by adopting new rules to mitigate conflict of interest for security-based swap clearing agencies. And this simply is coming in such a smooth transition. The regulators were called for under section 765 of Dodd-Frank Act. In the past month, the SEC has adopted other Dodd-Frank Act relating towards short sale transparency data and mandating security-based swap execution facilities register with the agency. So curbing the short selling data, curbing the real-time reports, curbing the actual risk managements and the security-based swaps with inclusion of the conflict of interest. This appears to be a whole lot to digest if you're a hedge fund, market maker, broker dealer or all of it at the same time guys probably this is already overwhelming for the hedge funds or institutional investors in general because this was the second rule targeting clearing houses this year the sec earlier this year proposed another rule that simply was designed to enhance the risk management responsibilities and resilience of covered clearing agencies so now you're having not only the actual market participants hedge funds on the market how they trade short going long how they borrow, what kind of collateral they are providing. But now you're going after the middlemen as well. You're going after the clearing houses or the broker dealers. So now they want to make sure that, you know, if their counterparties, if they work together on a particular deal, right? If the hedge fund borrowed the money from the broker dealer, right? And then you also are the owner of the clearing house. There is a triangle of movements of the whole settlement process. So is this conflict of interest? Well, the regulator is the one to decide on. But the idea over here is that they cannot decide on if they don't have the data. Now they will have the real-time data, they will have the filings, and they will have this independent evaluation and revisions on the connection on each and every trade on open market. Now you know exactly why the situation with Robinhood, with the clearing firm that potentially margin called Robinhood, is the whole a lot of different story. This is why it is very important each one of these very important market participants or counterparties to be independent, not related to any other firm, not being owned by any other firm or simply having a major shareholder as one of those. But because those stringent requirements were taken out of Dodd-Frank, when an old fashioned bank run hit SVB, the bank could not withstand the pressure. Shortly after that, Signature Bank collapsed. And to fight back the risk of contagion and to protect the banking system, the federal government, once again, was called on to take extraordinary measures, the kind of measures that Dodd-Frank was originally supposed to protect us against. These threats should never have been allowed to materialize. And now we must prevent them from occurring again by reversing the dangerous bank deregulation of the Trump era. On Monday, President Biden called on Congress and regulators to reverse the Trump era deregulation and, quote, strengthen the rules on banks to make it less likely that this kind of bank failure will happen again. The president is right. And that is why today, on the five-year anniversary of having weakened Dodd-Frank, I am introducing legislation along with 15 of my colleagues, including the president, including my colleague from Vermont, to reverse the mistakes that Congress and President Trump made five years ago when they rolled back a portion of Dodd-Frank. This is what my legislation does. First, it repeals Section 401 of the Economic Growth Regulatory Relief and Consumer Protection Act. This will restore strong Fed oversight of some of the nation's largest banks, which together hold trillions of dollars in assets. 
Stronger oversight will help protect our economy from heightened risk. It is absolutely essential that we demand stronger, not weaker, oversight of these multi-billion dollar banks. Second, my bill repeals Section 402 of the 2018 law. That section slashed the capital requirements for large, systemically significant custody banks. Big banks cannot be trusted with lower capital requirements that degrade their ability to withstand financial shock. And finally, my bill repeals Section 403, which made it easier for giant banks, those much larger than SVB, to weaken liquidity requirements by adding municipal debt to the definition of high quality liquid assets, particularly because such debt is actually not very liquid at all. Now, there are a lot more changes we need to make to our banking laws. There are many other provisions in the 2018 law that I oppose. Not to mention there are other rules that will be implemented soon in the early of 2024, which will be required the cybersecurity protection for each of these big institutional investors. And don't forget about the ESG regulations. So <laughs> the amount of new regulations and requirements that they have to co op is simply mind blowing. And all this costs a lot of money. Oh, I forgot to mention about the CAD system the consolidated audit trail system that also has to be paid from institutional investors to be implemented so there's a whole lot of things that are coming in 2024 and most of them will be simply be paid from the big boys on wall street probably you're not surprised hearing about the bailouts hearing about particular hedge funds merging together you're not surprised hearing that jim channels is converting the hedge fund into a family office so Probably we can speculate he doesn't want to comply with all these new rules, regulations and proposals because the family office you know, simply is not designed to, to co-op or, or mitigate particular risk with these rules. These rules targeting completely different funds. And again, the family office operates under secrecy and privacy. So all these reporting data information most likely will not reach the portfolio and the actions of the family office. This is why the big guys, like I mentioned, most likely will be repeating what Jim Channels did. We're most likely going to see an uptrade in either conversion of hedge funds toward family offices or simply launching more family offices instead of actual hedge funds. Yeah.